Welcome back to Quantum Code, I'm Martin. This is the 8th tutorial of the series dedicated to create an original 2D shooter game in Godot Engine. By the way, a link to the full place is in the description, check it out. In this tutorial, we will first design the GUI, then we'll create a global script with our player variables like the life, ammo and score. We'll also create a step back effect when the player is damaged and finally, we'll add a nice outline effect to our GUI using shaders. So stick till the end, you're going to learn interesting stuff. Without further ado, let's go straight into it. Back in Godot, let's create a new scene for the game user interface. The type will be a canvas layer. Let's create a margin container and add a child node which will be a vertical box container. Let's add a child node again. This one will be a texture rect. In this texture rect, you want to set an, a new texture, which is in assets, images, GUI. You want to select the hearth.png and drag and drop it. Let's call this image one and duplicate it 10 times. Now let's select all of the hearth. Now let's select all of these images and under rect at min size, you can set it for the Y axis to 105. So they take all the screen space. Now let's duplicate this margin container. We can rename the first one left container and this one right container. Let's call this one hers. And this vertical box container, we'll call it bolts. For all the texture, you want to drag and drop the ball.png. And for the right container, you want to select layout and write wide. Now let's create the global script to save all the data. So you want to go under script and select new script. We can call it global and store it under the scripts folder. Let's create some variables. One we'll call max ammo, which will, which will be the maximum bullets you can have. The other one we'll call it max life and set it to five, two. And let's create a variable ammo for the current uh, ammunition. Let's set it at max ammo first and same for the life. Let's create a life variable and set it to max life. Let's create a last variable named score and equal to zero. Now we will create three functions to update um, the ammo life and score. So the first one will be update ammo it will take a parameter and we'll just do ammo plus equal delta and we'll also emit a signal which we need to create we'll call it ammo changed and it will pass a variable, which will be the current ammo. So let's emit this signal. And the parameter will be ammo. Then we can create a function to update the life value. So we'll do life plus equal delta and we'll emit a signal. Let's call it life change. And it will pass a parameter, which will be the life. 
So let's add this signal. And then we can add a last function to update the score. It will also tell, take a delta uh, parameter and we'll just do score plus equal delta. So we'll use those signals to update the game user interface. To make this script accessible from everywhere in the code, you can go under project settings, auto load, and add the path of the script. Under the scripts folder, you want to select global. And for the node name, just set it at global. We can add it and we can close. Now, if we go back to our scene, we can create a new script. Let's call it GUI and save it. On the ready function, we want to connect the signals from our global scene. So we can just do global. As you can see now, this, scene, this script is accessible from everywhere. We can just type global and it will call this script. So global.connect. Uh, ammo changed with self and we'll create a function named update GUI ammo. We also want to connect the life change signal. So let's do global.connect life changed with self and we'll create a function called update GUI life. Now let's create those two functions. This one will take a parameter named ammo. And the other one will take a parameter named life. Now what we want to do is to show a number of images here which represent the value of life or ammo. So we can do a for loop and we can set at the left container and ball balls that get children. So here we will get all the nodes here from one to ten. And we can just check the value of each node with their name. So we can do an integer of the node and take its name. So for example, if we are here with this node, it will be one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can just check if it is um, smaller or equal to the ammo variable. In this case, we want it to be visible because if, for example, we have uh, four ammo, we want the one, two, three, and four to be visible and the other one to be hidden. So we can just do n that visible equal true. And if it's not the case, that means we don't want to see it. So we can do n dot visible equal false. Then let's copy paste this code under the update GUI life. And we just need to change this node to left container hearth. We also need to change ammo here to life. Now let's go back to our scene and we can save it under the scenes folder. Let's call it GUI. Now we need to update our variables in the global script. So we need to open up the player script and under the input event, we want to check if 
global that ammo is greater than zero, which means we have um, ammo left, we can shoot with it. In this case, we will shoot an ammo and we will just update the number of ammo. We'll do global that update ammo with a value of minus one because we want to reduce it by one. We can save it. Now under the ball script, under kill ball, we want to call global that update ammo again. But this time with, with a value of plus one or one. We can save it. Now we want to do the same for the live variable. So let's go in the player script. We'll create a new function. Let's call it damage player. It will take a variable amount and another one from point. So this will be um, a variable indicating where it had been, uh, where is the enemy or where, where is the ball hitting. So we can create a step back. So to create this step back effect, we can just set the, our velocity variable to position, which is the player position, minus from point. So this is the enemy position or the ball position, and we can normalize it. And multiply it by a step back factor. And let's create a variable for this step back factor. Equal to 500. Now let's update the uh, life. So global dot update life minus one. We can save it and now we need to call this function when we damage the player. So under the ball script, we can add a test. So if player in body.name, we can call the function under body that damage player. So this is the function we just created we'll make the amount one and the position is the current position. So the position of the ball. And after that, we can just kill the ball. So we call kill ball. Same for the enemy. Um, on body entered, if player in body name will kill the enemy. But before that, we want to uh, damage the player. So we call body that damage player with a value of one and from the current position. Let's test it now. So as you can see, we still have an issue because we have 10 life and 10 ammo at the beginning. But if the player gets hit, you can see we have the, the good value. So if I get hit again, I'm at one life and I only have three bullets le le uh, left. And if I shoot all of them, as you can see, I cannot have more than five in the scene. So that's cool. To fix the issue, we can just go in our GUI um, script. And under the ready function, we need to update the GUI ammo. So at the beginning with the global ammo value. So the variable global dot ammo. And same for the life. So update GUI life with the global dot life. Hit control S and now we can open up the player scene uh, to improve the step back effect. So let's add an animation player node. We'll call it step back. So let's create a new animation called step back. We will add tracks for the 
um, arm and legs. So let's just select left arm. And add track for the position and the rotation. Same for right arm. Left leg. and right leg. And at this moment we want to make a kind of jump effect so he will have the, uh, the arms and legs going up. So let's rotate it and move it a little bit. Same for right arm. and for the legs let's save all the positions and rotations now the animation length will set it to two seconds and at one second we want we want the player to be at the same position at the beginning so we can select all the keys and hit ctrl d so we have this jump effect now we can also select the sprites node and under visibility we can create a track for modulate Let's insert a key um, right here and set it as a full red color and back to a white color at one second. Then let's set it back to a red color and back again at full white color at 1.5 or 1.6. The animation is a little bit slow as you can see, so we can just select the animation player and under the playback options, set the speed to 4. So this is better. Now we can also add a timer. The wait time will be 0 0.2 seconds and we will use this timer to move the player during 0 0.2 seconds. Um, so the step back effect will be uh, more visible. Let's go back in the script. First, let's go to the damage player function. Uh, we want to check if the animation is already playing. Uh, in this case, we will not damage the player. That means it has already been uh, hidden, so he cannot take like uh, two times damage in less than one second. So, <clears throat> so let's just. Uh, select the animation player node, so step back and if it is not playing we will create the effect and we will damage the player now we also need to start the timer and the animation player node needs to play our animation so here we are I just forgot here to set it to the amount it's of course not minus one but minus amount because if for example you create a boss it can hit the player for let's say two lives or something like that now this effect is not really visible because it only applies during one frame because else we set the velocity here we set the velocity to um, move and slide velocity and we change the velocity uh, in those functions so what we need to do is simply to check if uh, our timer um, and go check the time left so if it is equal to zero that means um, we are not playing the step back or it's it has already been 0 0.2 seconds 
since we played a step back. So let's just um, put all of this. So that means during 0.2 seconds, the player will not be able to move the character as he wants, but the character will get a step back um, during 0.2 seconds. And if, it, if we are not in the 0.2 seconds, uh, we can move the player as we want. The last thing we want to do for this to work is to go on the timer and enable one shot, else this uh, time left uh, value will never be equal to zero. So now we can test it. So the life and ammo are updated at the beginning. If I shoot, you can see my ammo are uh, updated. And if a ball or an enemy hits me, as you can see, I have a convenient step back and uh, we have the animation playing. So this is really looking good. Now we can improve a little bit our GUI uh, by um, outlining uh, the hearth and the bolts because we cannot really see um, it is not really visible. So let's do this. So let's go back to the GUI, select one of the images and under material, let's create a new shader material and create a new shader. First, we want to set the shader type to canvas item. and the render mode to unshaded because it will not be affected by light. Then let's create an uniform float for the width of the outline effect. We can create a hint range, so it will be between 0, 0.0 and 20.0 then let's create a uniform vector 4 which is a color for the outline color now we'll use the fragment function which is called for each pixel and we'll first create a vector2 size which will be equal to vector2 width so this is our um, uh, width on the x and y axis and we'll divide it and we'll divide it by um, the texture size And here we'll set our texture and just zero as the other parameter. Then we can set the vector four for the sprite color. And it will just be equal to texture with our texture and the UV value. We just need a an alpha value which will be equal to sprite color and we'll take the alpha channel now we can do alpha plus equal texture and we'll pass our texture and the uv plus a vec2 which will be 0, 0.0 and minus size that y and we'll take the alpha of this okay so this will add a little bit of uh, alpha um, on the right of the image then we can do a vec3 final color equal mix with the outline color and we'll take the RGB value and the sprite color we'll also take the RGB value 
and we'll mix uh, in function of the sprite color that alpha. And finally, we can set the color to vector 4. We'll pass the final color and we'll clamp our alpha value uh, to be back in between 0 and 1. So clamp alpha 0 and 1.0. So now if we go under shader param and set the width to for example 5 and set the outline color to white as you can see we've created an outline. Um, now to make it uh, everywhere we need to duplicate this line and set for example size.y so now we also have it on top then we can duplicate again and set this to 0 and instead we set the size that x axis so we have it on the left part and if we duplicate again, we can have it also on the right part, doing minus says that x. We can also we can do it even better by duplicating again, and this time doing size that x and size that y. And then we duplicate this three more times, and we can do minus size that x, minus size that y and minus size that x and minus size that one so we have all the cases and now it creates a cool outline i will just reduce the width to three for example and now we have it in order to save this effect to apply it to every image you can hit save call it outline and save it now we can select all of our effects and we can simply drag and drop the outline under the material so now as you can see we have this effect on the hearth and also on the balls so if i hit play we can really see how many lives and ammo we have left so that's really cool okay that's all for this episode uh, hope you enjoyed and see you uh, on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, uh, check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell so you get notified when the next video is out. Also, you can leave us any feedback or any question in the comment section. We will answer quickly. See you.